Around 2005, I was working for the Jewish community as an archivist uh, in Helsinki, and one day I got this call uh, from the community that they had just discovered a room full of archival documents. And when I started to do the inventory, I found uh, like a big dusty pile of these cabaret songs and, and many Yiddish plays. <laughs> One of the things that struck me about uh, this collection was the number of years over which these songs were created, which I think spanned from the 1920s uh, to around 1960. Many of the, the tunes to which the uh, texts were set I was unfamiliar with and that would be sort of part of the the research uh, into the material to see exactly what uh, Mr. Weinstein had in mind. We started making our way through the texts and looking at the um, looking at the texts that had melodies associated with it, looked at the texts that didn't have melodies associated with it and started picking out the ones that we thought would translate the best on recording and that would come together nicely. Well, first thought was when Lauren calls me for anything, I say yes before I <laughs> before I look at what it is because I know it's going to be good. Yiddish Cabaret has a special place in European culture just in general because it's a very specific sense of humor and multiple uh, musical styles and then to find out that it's specific to this smaller community that is not that well known in the world, already that was a selling point for me. Jacques Weinstein was born in Helsinki in uh, 1883. He was a uh, son of a, a former soldier in the Russian army. Uh, Finland was then uh, part of the Russian Empire and Jews came to Finland as soldiers. Deep down he was a serious character, but he was a, he was a great joker. He was a, a sort of a classical Jewish intellectual person. And uh, uh, his great passion was, of course, writing. Der ganze Kajach in der Welt is nieder meach nor dos The songs are satire about the life in the Helsinki Jewish community. There are a lot of songs about merchants who were selling ready-made clothes. There's one song from the wartime, which is very unique because Finland was kind of de facto allied uh, with Nazi Germany, so that made Finnish Jews uh, brothers in arms with, with the Nazis. Some of his plays and writings were, were rather critical because the community, particularly before World War II, was, was rather isolated and part of his, his purpose was to open up the windows a little bit. A 
lot of the songs were set to pre-existing tunes to the popular songs of the day uh, in which they were uh, created. So uh, a lot of times it was possible to, you know, to match the tunes and to see how they went with the with the text. And in some cases, uh, we ended up writing our own our own music for them. We didn't want the the, the melodies that were new to feel that like they were coming from somewhere. Uh, that they wouldn't have fit. I mean, so we looked at the rest of the songs and we you know, thought about what, would, what kind of melodies um, and settings would have been used then. And then, yeah, a few of them, one or two, we, we, we found some other melodies that we kind of smushed it all together. <laughs> Michael both understand the Yiddish side of it and the humorous side of it. So they really underline what this is, what these songs are, what these stories are, in the most gentle and thoughtful way. Welcome to the Sibelius Lounge. We're here with Rob Ford tonight. We hope you all had a wonderful time. Okay, enough jokes, Lauren. I like the the song that I wrote the music for about the uh, dragon, and because I <laughs> it's like my opportunity to to, to play me Arthur Sullivan. This one right over here, uh, the one about the football football field. I really like this one. Uh, mostly, I really liked the melody, and I thought that it was uh, an ironically sad song. And of course, knowing that we had the use of the theremin to make it even that much sadder and weepy. This is what I love about this style and this repertoire because you get to wear multiple hats. You get to be a delicate flower and an angry wife and you get to be a member of the community, you get to be an actress. So to me what's the most interesting about this project is not this one particular song that I fell in love with, or this melody, but rather the overarching story of it all. <laughs> You know, it kind of makes you wonder what other sorts of things are are out there that are like this. Uh, and the fact that we have this kind of picture of a Helsinki Yiddish-speaking community is really unique and special. And I'm very happy to be a part of this project. Well, I think you're doing a great cultural job, not only for the Jewish culture in Finland, and Helsinki in particular, but also for a larger audience who is interested in Yiddish culture. For many people, maybe it will be some sort of idea of nostalgia about a community lost. But the fact that we're doing it proves that it's not lost. And it just makes these names and these people and these stories live. And there is something very exciting about that. Josef, Josef, ich mir getreue, kein nemes Wort in den ganzen Kopf und Leib, dein Herz und Flagge, wie ein helles Schwein. 